CircWorks Art Labs and I'd like to welcome you once again to the underground lair where we create robots, alien zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. On a typical day we do that anyway, but on an atypical day we create misfits, and today is one of those atypical days. It is the big atypical day to be precise, the day where we finally complete our miscrit. Yes, we have finished so far three evolutions, we have sketched out our fourth evolution, we've done the line art to our fourth evolution, and today we are going to color and finalize that fourth evolution. And that is super awesome. Um, so anyway, why don't we take a trip down memory lane. I'm going to throw up some pictures so, just so we can catch up to see where we are. Here is the first evolution. Looks pretty cool. Really happy with it. I like the way, I like the way it, you know, it starts out kind of cute, but it's going to get bigger and badder. Like this one, we're going to switch over now. Let me throw up the second evolution. Now, we don't have names for these yet. Um, again, if you guys have any suggestions, the theme we're going for is, it's, it, you know, it's based on a bear. It's also based sort of on the constellation Ursa Major, Ursa Minor, so it's got sort of a space constellation theme to it. It also is a, like a performer, like a, a, it's very theatrical. Um, it, when it does its attacks, it uses, you know, it, it kind of uses finesse and it, it's kind of a little bit of a show off. So I'll give you some ideas of what we're looking for if you guys have suggestions. And let's go on over to our third evolution, our, th our the only other final one we have so far until the end of this video, and we'll probably come back and we'll, th we'll throw up the final one for everyone to see. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll bring all of these back together and we'll do a real quick slideshow and you can kind of see its evolution. So there you have it, folks. That's where we are so far, and we are going to, you know, we are going to continue on today, and we're going to finish this. We're going to go into the lab, start working on the colors, finalizing all that. Should be a lot of fun. But, uh, you know, without further ado, we're going to go down to the lab. We're going to finish this miscreant up. Again, thanks to everyone for watching, and I, I will be back. You haven't seen the last of me. All right, so let's pull this bad boy up, and he is pretty bad, I think. Uh, Definitely looks like he could do some damage, so hopefully they'll give him some good stats and, and uh, he will come in really handy when you guys bring him into the game and, and, and battle him with other creatures. Here's hoping. Anyway, so as you can see, we are, we are taking all our line art. We've kind of been through this process before, but here's a little review. All the line art we had, we click on that line art and then we go to our little palette up there in the middle. You can see we tap it on that. As soon as you tap on that, once the line, our outlines are selected, it's going to fill it in because the little palette that we've created has all that information. It's got the stroke and the fill. I um, mean, you can do that the same with any shape. If, if I was to click, say, say if I had like one of the light bulbs here, the little light bulbs that are kind of, you know, rotating around his hand that he's kind of controlling. If I decided, hey, I want to make that thing the same color of his nose, all I have to do is click on the, click on the light bulb. Then we go to the eyedropper tool, which is off to the toolbar to the left, or on, on this video anyway, you can move the toolbar kind of where you want it. But it looks like an eyedropper. And you click on, you would click on his nose, and then that light bulb is going to change that color. So any shape you have, so those little circles up there, they, they could you could replace those with any kind of shape. Um, so once we get all our flat shapes um, completed, which I think we're about done now, now we want to go in and we start shading. Now, how we do that is we get our selection tool and we select whatever shape we want. So right now we're kind of working on some of the fur. We'll, so we, we click once to select our shape and you'll notice a bounding box come around it and uh, appear around it. That shows that it's selected. And what a bounding box is, it's, uh, it's where, it, it's kind of like a, depending on what layer you're on, each layer has its own color associated with it. Um, so it'll be that color, whatever color you have assigned to your layer, and then you'll have little um, little handles at the, each corner and on the sides of your shape. So once you see that bounding box, then you are going to go, if down in your toolbox, there is an icon down towards the very bottom, 
Um, it is the it's the drawing modes icon. It's a little a square like superimposed over a circle. So you click on that and you get three choices. You get draw normal, draw behind, and draw inside. What we're going to do is click on draw inside, and then now in addition to the bounding box, you'll have a little dotted line around that. Okay. So that shows that you're drawing inside. That dotted line is showing that you're drawing inside. And you'll see that, like right now, you can see it right now. It's kind of hard to see unless you're zoomed in, but that is a little dotted line. Um, but but here's, here's something you got to pay attention to. When, when you first click on that, um, you, want, you have to, once you see the bounding box and the dotted line around it, you got to click off of that shape just once. Don't click twice, just off that shape. And then the bounding box will go away, and all you will see is the is the little dotted line. And it's kind of it's kind of just in the corners of the shape. It's it's not in the middle. It kind of breaks in the middle. Um, and then that's just that's just showing that you're drawing inside. So once you get that, then you click on you can click on whatever drawing tool you want to use. If you want to use your pen tool or um, I usually use the pencil for this because I, it's, it's, I kind of like to freehand it a little bit. So I click on my pencil tool and then I just draw whatever shape um, inside. And all you have to do is pay attention to what is inside your shape. Anything outside, it doesn't really matter. You don't want to go too far outside because it, it's just, you're kind of, it's not necessary. So it's like, anything inside the shape is what you're going to see and then you kind of go around whatever's not inside that shape and then kind of come full circle and connect your shape then once you have that you can go to your your swatches palette and you click on whatever color you want that to be and it'll fill in that shape so as you can see right now those shapes i just added and i'm kind of right now playing with the opacity um, of those shapes to kind of give it more of a transparency because on the lightning anyway because you want that to kind of we want to kind of see through for the background and everything because it is supposed to be light and everything like that but anyway so yeah and then you just keep going along again i'm just using my my pen tool and as long as that little dotted lines around you're going to be drawing inside the shape only and then you you start i start usually with two different colors uh, for a shape for the sh shadow um, I've got, I've got like a mid-tone shadow and then the darker shadow and then I've got my highlight and then of course the mid-tone which is the, the original color of the shape. Um, and then once you're all finished with, with whatever shape you're working on, you just want to double click and that will deselect everything and then you've got your, you've got your, um, your shaded shape with your highlights and your, um, and your shadows. Now, here's the trick. There's kind of a trick to this. And this, again, this is kind of review. I think I talked about this a little more. And I, I realize I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not going step by step as far as what you're seeing on the video. And I'm probably talking a little fast. Um, so if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Um, but again, this is kind of a review. I've, I've kind of went over this before in other videos. Um, but if you want to go back into your shape, then you have to, you can't just use your regular selection tool and draw inside. It won't, it, if you try to, if you click on it, you'll get your bounding box. You will go to your, um, go to your drawing modes, the little square over the circle, and you'll notice that the draw inside is grayed out. It's not, you can't select it. Once you've drawn inside of it, it's not going to let you draw in it again, unless you do a little trick. Um, I'll, and it's it's not that difficult. So you've got your two selection tools. You've got your your regular selection tool. It's a black arrow, and then your white arrow, which is your direct selection tool. If you've already drawn in a shape and you want to go back in and draw again, then you're going to want to click that shape with your direct selection tool, the white arrow tool. And then when you go down to your um, your drawing modes uh, palette, you'll notice that the draw inside is active. So then you can go back in. So, and that was something, and the reason why I bring that up is because that's something at first I didn't really know. I thought once you drew in it and you deselected your shape, you couldn't get back in there. So I'm like, oh, I got to remember, you know, I got to make sure I, I don't want to make any more changes to that, which is, I, go, I, I was thinking, well, that's kind of kind of crazy that you can't go back in. And then, um, you know, one of the artists, other artists of Broken Bones showed me that you could do that. So, and uh, and again, this is just my technique. This is how I color stuff. I know I know other artists at Broken Bulb, they would do a whole different technique. They would some of them would would draw a shape, 
and then they would go, they wouldn't use the, the draw and side tools. Um, cause it can get, you know, when you're trying to edit and everything, like they probably, anyone that's making the, um, making like the, the foils and the, and the darks and the, and the, you know, all those, you know, special like variant miscrits probably hate me because, um, it is a little hard, harder to edit when you do the draw and side, but it, it just goes a lot faster and it's more, more efficient at least for me. Um, but the other, there's other techniques like you do the shape, um, say if it's a red shape and then they'll kind of just go over that same, maybe they'll, they'll copy, say if, say if I created this cape that's off the back of them and then I've got that shape, then you just duplicate that same shape and then you cut out, cut out of the, of the shape, you know, where your shadows would be. So all you have left is, is you're kind of, erasing you know part of that shape you created and then what they'll do is they'll they'll make it like a darker red and transparent and then they'll just lay it back over that and the same thing with the highlights i don't know if that makes sense the way i've described it but um that's another way to do it and a lot of people do that as well where it's just you're just putting a transparent shape that's almost like what you already have above it and then you just keep doing that and adding your highlights and things like that. And that's another way to do it. So, but anyway, so yeah, this is, uh, this has been really fun. I'm, I'm glad I got a chance to, to create this miscrit. I'm happy with how it turned out. Hopefully you guys are happy with it too. Um, thanks for, thanks for following me with this videos. I know I got a lot, a lot of new subscribers and people that kind of found my channel, um, because you're miscrit fans and, and, and if that's all you are as Miscrit fans, that's cool. I dig it. Um, but I, I am going to be doing all kinds of other, you know, other work on the channel. So if you guys, you know, check some of that other stuff out and let me know what you think. Um, and hopefully I, you know, ho hopefully there's more stuff to come that you'll also enjoy. And I'll, I'll be doing some more creatures similar to Miscrits. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing any specific, you know, Miscrits. But um, I think what I'll do is, is just continue on this you know, this was Miscrit's Creature Design 101, so I'll probably like continue Creature Design 101, and we'll have some other creatures. And maybe you know, if Broken Bulb likes them, you know, they might be in the style of a Miscrit. If they like them, maybe we can get those in the game too. So we'll see what happens. But you know, like I said, I'm going to be back, and uh, and hopefully, hopefully, I'll let you guys know um, the status of what's going to happen trying to get this into the game because it's not over yet we gotta we gotta pitch this thing to broken bulb and and hopefully get them on board and get this thing in the game so thanks again everyone thanks for liking thanks for subscribing leave your comments let me know what you think and i'm gonna pass it back over to me and we'll close this thing out And there you have it, folks. That is the miscrit. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed hearing your comments, and a lot of you guys gave some really good suggestions. Some of them even even got worked into the creature. Um, I really appreciate all of those ideas. It's, it's kind of fun to, to create something uh, and get that feedback from the community and, and have that kind of inform what the creature becomes and everything. But uh, your work isn't over yet because, like I said, we still need to come up with names. So please send me some suggestions for names. If you've got, you know, attack ideas or anything like that, uh, stats or anything, I can forward that along to, to uh, Broken Ball Productions when I pitch this thing to them. And, you know, again, fingers crossed. We're really looking forward to hopefully getting this into the game. There may be some changes. Who knows? We may have to change little things here and there. But uh, I think I think we got a good chance of getting this in the game. And I'm going to let you guys know when I come back. We'll do another video and I will hopefully have a cool a big announcement to let you guys know that yes it was accepted and it's going to go in the game because I know you guys are just you know chopping at the bit for some original miscrits because um, it's it seems like it's been a little while since we had a fully original miscrits we've got kind of variants and things like that so so I think the game is in need of this so so hopefully um, hopefully it'll you know we'll be able to get this uh get this thing approved and you guys will start be able to start playing it in the game and that would be super awesome thanks again to staff from misker mania and uh thanks to all of you guys for watching and supporting these videos and everything and i'm going to be back but before before we go i want to fade out i'm just going to show you once again sort of a little slideshow of our miscrit um evolution one to evolution four and then uh yeah so check this out and thanks again and that is all Point out, 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 point out,